and that kind of leads me into um, validity issues that we have when we're talking about experimental design. Um, there's two sources of uh, invalidity, um, something that's not valid again. Uh, there's a thing called, is the research internally valid and is it externally valid? So internally valid, internal validity, did the treatments or the um, independent variable really cause the, the change in the outcomes, which is the dependent variable? Any problems with internal validity have to do with the design and or methods flaws. If you're if you design the research improperly, you can have some real problems with the internal validity. The in, independent variable really didn't cause any change on a dependent variable because you have some issues with the, the internal validity. And again, we identify this within the limitations of our chapter one. That's what the limitations of a study are. It's their weaknesses. What's, what's wrong with the design of the study? Now the other kind of pro other validity issue is called external validity, and what external validity is, can you generalize or can you take the results of the final study findings? Can you really say that the results of that study from that study's um, subjects? Can you generalize the information back to the the population? If we did a study on, um, I'm going to use athletic training students. Say we had 250 athletic training students, we did some kind of study on them. Can we really take the results back to all athletic training students? Uh, some of these issues are non-design and or method flaws. If we don't design our study correctly, the internal validity part, then we're going to, it's going to end up having external validity issues. That's now we're going to talk about specific threats to internal validity. Uh, the textbook does a, a pretty decent job on going over these different threats. I think I think we got about nine of these. Our first one, and these aren't in in, in any particular um, order of, uh, of, of importance here. So the first one's called history, and we have events that are not part of the treatment, and so. In the book, it says, in a study evaluating the effects of a semester of physical education on the physical fitness of fifth graders, the fact that 60% of the children participated in a recreational soccer program won't constitute a history threat to internal validity. So it's things outside of your experiment that have nothing to do with the treatment or the experiment. Uh, so it's other issues. Say you set up a, a fitness program, and just like the, the example in the book, um, they're only supposed to do your fitness program, but they turn around and say, well, I want to work out more. So you have some people that have work out more. That's part of the history. That's a threat to the, the internal validity. Another threat is maturation. Um, this is really critical with kids because let's say you do a exercise program you start at the beginning of the year and you're going to track them through the whole year say we're doing like fourth graders and we want to do a test at the beginning and we do tests throughout the year or to towards the end of the year well the kids are going to mature naturally and they're going to learn and they're going to get stronger so uh, maturation is a big issue with that Another threat is testing the effects of more than just one test. Um, in a lot of these designs, you'll see we do a pre-test and a post-test or multiple different tests. Well, that's going to have effect because people may learn how to do better on the test. So that's a threat. The next threat is called instrumentation. And the instrument, we've talked about the reliability and validity that reliability is the ability of the instrument to measure the same thing repeatedly over and over and validity is does it actually measure what it's supposed to measure and so sometimes there can be lack of 
instrument validity and reliability and um, it also can be um, people may change over time the people are actually doing the test the calibration may change to, um, over time another threat is statistical regression um, I call this regression towards the mean that means you can keep doing the test over and over again people are going to start um, um, going back towards the means because we know the bell-shaped curve and most people are in the um, mean and then if we select individuals that are on either side of the the extreme on scores extremely low or extremely high in a score they're probably going to go back towards the middle over time and statistically we know that the next uh, threat is selection bias um, well, selection bias is when we don't randomly select our participant now let me give you some other terms that you've got to be familiar with one is we talked about before is random selection whereas we have our population and we want to randomly select our target or our subjects so everybody has equal chance to be in the study random selection then another one is random assignment to groups where after we've randomly selected our groups we let's say we have three groups in our study we randomly assign those members into groups so they're all equal to one another well if we have selection bias that means we have non-random participation selection um, and sometimes that's just something we have to do and that means we select our participants by convenience or all the other forms of uh, non-random selection that we talked about in the past uh, experimental mor mortality well, that means that we lose subjects during we've set up our 12-week um, um, experiment and during that 12 weeks we lose one or two of our subjects there's not much we can do about that uh, selection maturation interaction uh, is our next uh, threat to internal validity and what the book does a pretty decent job here describing this uh, selection maturation interaction is the passage of time and influencing groups differently um, one group is selected because some specific characteristics whereas another group lacks this characteristics and so the book is an example um, a study there's a study of the differences between six-year-olds and two school districts students in one school district from the experimental group receives a fitness program and the students in the other are control group if the school districts have different em emission policies so that the six-year-olds in experimental group are five months older it will be difficult to determine whether the fitness program or the fitness program combined with participants of each age produced observed changes so got to look at who's in your group are they really equal are they similar groups uh, are similar subjects the next uh, threat is expectancy uh, this is an influence of experimenters on the participants the actual the researcher or the experimenter themselves may expect the experimental group to do better than the crook control group so they may actually rate them differently than the uh, control group so there's some bias going on there so we we talked about threats to internal validity let's talk about threats to external validity and we have four of these um, again threats to external validity is can you take the results from your study and take it back to the population can you really say that the results from your study can be really uh, given back to the general population or the population of your study so reactive or interactive effects of testing that if you give pretest it really we've talked about this in internal validity so it kind of goes back to this too 
the pretest may make the participants sensitive to the treatment. They may, since they did the pretest, they already may know what's coming and they've learned how to do the test. So that's one threat to external validity. The interaction of selection bias and treatment. The treatment may work only on participants selected on specific um, characteristics. Uh, in the book they give a pretty good example of in this. For example, a drug education program might be effective in changing attitudes of college freshmen towards drug use, but this program probably not going to have an effect on the third-year medical students. They're two different groups, so um, it's really you can only give that results to specific groups of individuals. Uh, you can't make it real general to the whole world, the whole population. It has to be specific to a group. Uh, reactive effects of experimental arrangements. Uh, the setting constraints may influence generalizability. For example, if you're if the study was done in a laboratory, uh, you really shouldn't be able to generalize the results of that study back to non-laboratory settings. And that, that worked in a laboratory, but how well will it really work in a baseball field or a basketball court? So that's for example. Uh, multiple treatment interference is the next threat to internal validity. One treatment may influence the next treatment. So if we have a, um, a study where you have multiple treatments, multiple experiments going on with the group, uh, they may interfere with the effect of the outcome, the total outcome at the end, then that result may not be very generalizable back to, our, to any population at all. So we need to, we need to control threats to internal and external validity. And so we're going to talk about the steps, how to control threats to internal and external validity. The first one, the big one is really internal because that's where we really have all the control. If we control the issues in internal validity, and most of the time it's going to control our external validity issues. And again, where we identify the weaknesses in our study, where we know we have limitations or we have threats to our internal validity is in our chapter one in the limitations section. Okay, so the main way that we control internal validity is in the randomization, which is again, we, we, we do random selection of our subjects and we do random assignment of our subjects uh, to groups. That is the best way for us to uh, control internal validity issues. Um, and a lot of times that's kind of hard to do in our area so, and again, what they mean by real randomization is that uh, everybody has equal chance to be in a study. Another type of randomization is called match pairs, not match groups. This is where we assign participants based on particular characteristics. Um, for example, example, uh, we can. Uh, assigning participants based on gender, experimental level, um, grade level, those type of things. The other critical thing is that we want to have equal numbers of participants with that characteristic in the experimental and the control group. Uh, as a reminder, the number that we probably want in each one of our groups is about 30. We want to have about 30 subjects in each group. So if we have a study with three different groups, we need to have a total of 90 subjects uh, with three or 30 um, subjects in each group. The other way that we control internal validity issues is by using a placebo effect. Now the placebo effect, a control, uh, a control group The placebo is when the control group receives um, a fake treatment where they think they are getting a treatment 
at the same time the experimental group is getting their real treatment. Uh, we've heard of placebos, you know, sugar, salt pills, whatever, or sugar pills. You think you're getting something, um, but you're really not. And so both groups or three groups or whatever, everybody thinks they're getting the same treatment, but one group of people is really not getting a treatment, but they think they are. So that's a placebo. Uh, a blind setup is when the uh, the participants don't know whether they are part of the experimental group or if they are receiving, oh, excuse me, they don't know if they're, uh, they are getting the real treatment or a fake treatment um, or if they are in the experimental or control group. And a double blind setup is where uh, the participants or the experimenters don't know which treatment uh, everybody's getting. So the experimenter, the researcher, and uh, the, the participants don't know which treatment which treatment they are receiving, if if it's real or not. Some uncontrolled threats to internal validity is uh, reactive effects of testing. Again, we talked about that. You know, reactive test. The effect of testing is that they get a pretest and they learn and so on their post test they learn something. The only way to get rid of that is you got to eliminate the pretest. And some designs that's not the best way to do it. Some designs it's best to have the pre and post test. Other things that we can't control is the instrumentation. Um, we can to a point we have if we design if we have good reliable instruments. Uh, if the calibration goes out of whack. Sometimes we can't do much about that. If our scale um, through the time of passage of time with our study, our scale, weight scale, gets out of calibration, uh, unless we're calibrating every single time, that's the only way we can control that. Other things called halo effect, where the person who is actually giving or might be uh, rating, say you're doing some kind of observational rating score test. Um, the researcher or the observer may actually um, rate the, be the beginning people and the last people differently over time. They either get closer to one another or further apart so they change the way they rate the people. And the last one is experimental mor mortality or subject mor mortality. Um, that's where people drop off and you can't do nothing about that. You got to try to keep your participants engage as, as, as many ways as you can. Now to control threats to external validity, um, the things to do with that is, uh, is get your population, your subjects from the large uh, population as possible. Uh, get You, you want to select from the largest population, your participants, your treatments, and your situations all need to be randomly selected. It's about the only thing you can do. Another terminology that's in the textbook is called e uh, ecological validity. Does the setting capture the essence of the real world? What that means is uh, can you, th did your study, was it like the real world? Was it a lab? Uh, you want to try to make your, uh, the experiment as close to the uh, real life setting as, as possible. Uh, so you have to get as close as you possibly can.